Hello, this is Greg Allison with Green Greg's coming to you on late night, 3rd September 2020. And we've got a lot to talk about, quite a plenty. So it just so happens that tensions between India and China are rapidly up due ratchet. And it just so happens that China may have been caught in a catch it. So there's been a bit of a turn of tables. But the thing to remember from this is that we are now seeing a big risk of escalation and potentially war between China and India. And <clears throat> you gotta bear in mind, there was, the last time there was a war between China and India was in 1962. And then neither country was a nuclear nation. Greg, why does this matter to me? You know, I'm in the United States, I'm in Britain, Australia, wherever you're from, right? What does, what do I have to be concerned about here with? Well, it so happens that in exchange, even between uh, smaller countries like uh, Pakistan and India, a limited nuclear exchange of 100 weapons could result in a nuclear winter, according to a lot of scientists. They could plunge our climate into a mini ice age and cause food, food systems across the globe to collapse, even worse than what we're seeing right now, far worse. And so you could have mass starvation around the world. Yeah, it could affect you and I here. Other things that could affect us <clears throat> is that, uh, say you're here in the United States, and this is true in many other countries. Many of us are heavily invested in both countries. For example, the United States has invested into China. Even to this day, it's about the trade war for manufacturing. Look at Apple, for example, it's production center. And there's the call centers in India uh, that the United States and other countries are also heavily invested in, especially English speaking countries, because they speak really good English in India. <laughs> and uh, the Philippines too, I might add. So <clears throat> it just so happens that both countries uh, are intertwined with us economically, like it or not, and we're getting more and more involved with China and, excuse me, with India. <laughs> yeah, we're still involved with China, maybe in ways we don't wanna be, but we're getting more and more involved with India. And in fact, we are on the verge of forming a NATO type alliance with India, with Australia and Japan and other countries that are surround, surrounding the South China Sea may get into that because the countries around the South China Sea are not exactly ecstatic about it with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. I wonder why, the non-national line thing? <laughs> you should see my other videos on the topic. <clears throat> so we're gonna get into this. Just be aware that what has happened is um, after months of high level military talks, uh, this months long standoff is not ended between India and China. In fact, the tensions have just ratcheted up. Uh, and New Delhi claimed Monday to have stopped the Chinese push by pushing back. And China claimed the Chinese, uh, oh, uh, excuse me, China claimed that the Chinese troops have always strictly abided by the actual line of control and they blame the Indians. So there's much to talk about here. Before we get into this, before we go into the depths of this discussion, um, we'll do a couple of things here. One, I'm gonna uh, bear, bear in mind, guys, that uh, I and my channel cover a lot of topics. I come to you with the proposition to help you survive, thrive, and stay out of the hive. <clears throat> that we need to know what's going on in the world so that we can prep and prep properly. And with so many things coming at us, I tell you, you gotta keep your eyes wide open and head on a swivel because it's coming at us from inside and from outside. We're talking strife, we're talking economic, we're talking um, potential warfare, internal, external. We're talking all kinds of economic stress, uh, food insecurity, food supplies being short, prices going up. We are uh, in a perfect storm as we come to the close of 2020. This winter may be a really bad ride. And especially after the drench go and, and, and you look in China with all the floods they're having, uh, not only are food supplies in great shortage, prices are expected to go up, availability is expected to go down, but this puts more tension on the world. It puts more tension on leaders like Xi Jinping. 
he's under a lot of pressure right now to act, to, to divert attention away from his internal problems. And we refer to that sometimes as wag the dog. So this is why you need to be prepared. And I'm gonna share with you something you need to think about. Oh yeah, there's the actual line of control, by the way. <laughs> Let me throw this up. Good point. Oh yeah, this is the this is the region in uh, between China and India. This was Kashmir and Jammu originally, right here. Let me circle this cursor. As you know, uh, uh, India carved Ladakh out of the, the Kashmir and Jammu area. Uh, and actually, this is the territory right here that India ceded to China, and this is your actual line of control. But this red area was the original principality of Jammu and Kashmir. So that was all once together. So, uh, and this is the area being followed over right through here, all this area right here. I'll go into that in just a minute. But like I said, food supplies are really challenged right now. Uh, we don't know what's coming at us, so better consider uh, prepping, having food storage. I showed a video on just going to the store and buying that long-term storage food, you know, rice and uh, beans, and canned goods. I've got a video on that. Go back and check it out. But this is a great deal right here. I mean, right here, you, you can get a four-week supply of 25-year good long-term storage food that you can carry in easy-carry buckets and it's 2,000 calories per day for only $197. Get it right now while you can. This is $100 off. This is a third off. I mean, this is a stupendous deal. $197 for a whole month of meals. Holy smoke, 2,000 calories a day. Yeah, you can't beat that. And this, this is an investment right now. This is a good investment. Even if food prices weren't set to go up catastrophically, like some of us think, over the long term, food, everything goes up. And we're expecting our dollar to go down. So look at this good food. I mean, you, you get uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, <laughs> and desserts, and even drinks. 2,000 calories a day for a whole month for 200 bucks? You spend more than that right now. So hey, I would consider really stocking up, buy as many as you can while you can. Because if the grid goes down, you may not have the internet available. As food supplies tighten, uh, th these availabilities may disappear. And in fact, uh, prices may go up. They've been holding this price for, you know, we've been holding this down for a little bit, but don't expect that this will continue. If you can't do that, you can get a two week emergency uh, food supply for $97. That's a good discount too. But your deepest discount, you know, they just discounted that. <laughs> That's pretty good. But the best discount is right here with the uh, four week supply. So really consider that. This is something you can bug out with easier than a, a cans and big bags if you have to, these beautiful carrying handles here. So uh, let's go back into our uh, story here of what we need to consider for uh, what we're facing over there. Now bear in mind, China is uh, kind of getting into it all over the place South China Sea, Taiwan, Hong Kong. Uh, India, they're even busting with Russia over Vlad Vladivostok. So I've covered that in the video and I said, this is why we might be able to make peace with Russia and turn them on our side. Uh, yeah, Russia's not behaving well in terms of this, you know, a, a critic of Putin that uh, got poisoned. Yeah, Putin is a dictator. And absolute power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. He's got a lot of power in that country, so that's what you're going to get. But uh, to use him as a backup, uh, or at least to know he's not on China's side, it would be huge. Uh, he knows that, you know, that China is not going to be his best friend if uh, the United States is suddenly out of the way. That's all I'm going to say. So let's go look now at what's happening in the Himalayas. <laughs> so both sides are blaming each other. And here's what happened. Uh, Indian military spokesman, a man, Anand, said this. He said, on the night of the 29th and 30th of August, the PLA troops violated previous consensus arrived at during military uh, diplomatic engagements during the ongoing standoff in Eastern Ladakh and carried out provocative military movements to change the status quo. And he added, no physical uh, 
there was no physical clashes. And basically he said that the Indian troops repelled the Chinese troops trying to take strategic position in the Pangong Lake area. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. We'll go to look at Pangong Lake and uh, Google Earth. All right, he further said, the Indian army is committed to maintaining peace and tranquility throughout, uh, he said, through dialogue. He said, but it's also equally determined to protect its territorial integrity. Oh, uh, but you know, so that was again, Colonel Aman Anand. He is the military spokesman for the, the uh, Indian Army in this regards. Ah, well, you know, of course, the People's Liberation Army, the Army of China, or the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, said uh, they, they also had a colonel. <laughs> His military spokesman responded, Senior Colonel uh, Zhang Suhili. Got that right. He said, and it's almost saying the same thing, you switch it around, right? <laughs> Get this. The Indian Army undermined the consensus reached in previous multi level talks between the two sides and once again illegally crossed the line on the south bank of Pangan South. <clears throat> He basically said the same thing, just flipped the other way. So they're both, uh, you know, countering each other. Uh, Pangong Sao is a glacial lake at 14,000 feet. Let's go have a look at Pangong Sao here real quick. See what this area is that they're all the consternations over. And it's this big lake, big, huge glacial freshwater lake, 14,000 feet up this back out in the Himalayas. I mean, this thing is way up and right in the middle of the, the mountains here. So, you can see all these red lines in here. These are the borders and the points of contention. Uh, and, but look at this lake, it's beautiful. I mean, you can see the pictures here. Uh, you just go into Google Earth and click on these photographs. Uh, and there's some very beautiful photographs. Whoops, there we go. That kind of makes me think of the moon, though. <laughs> and that photograph, you know, like uh, I believe it was uh, Buzz Aldrin who called the moon magnificent desolation. Well, that looks a little career. <laughs> it's beautiful, it really is. But that one image, you know, it, other than the water, it kind of reminded me of the moon, magnificent desolation, as Buzz Aldrin stated on the moon. By the way, I know Buzz Aldrin. He's called my house right here. Couple times at least. So let's get on with this. Um, as you know, we've had these conflicts here between uh, India and China. Uh, this time they started in uh, May of this year. There was a skirmish in September. One in um, June uh, was uh, caused some problems. <laughs> Yeah, they, it was fisticuffs, but some people are, let's say, planted in the ground now. I'll be careful how I say that. <laughs> it's mean you know, you see, it's a big lake, and sometimes it freezes over and has just a thin layer of ice on. Just imagine walking on eggshells on a thin ice and earthquake. You know, that's like top on this platform sometimes. <laughs> what you can say is uh, somewhat limited, so let's just leave it with that. You know what I mean? But guess what? Um, India has put 35,000 troops up in this area. Yeah, 35,000. And, uh, you know, what China has uh, uh, been putting troops and tanks, both of them have been putting troops and tanks and uh, all kind of forces up here, uh, including fighter jets, which uh, are a little bit strange. So you, you might know that. Uh, China's not exactly happy with the Indian response we're about to go into. The Indians had a, took preemptive action. And the Chinese Global Times did a poll that said that 90% of the people in China support uh, the, the People's Liberation Army penalizing uh, India strongly. So if you think there's not a potential for this to escalate, uh, think again. Well, here's what happened. Here's the, here's the goods on the events. Um, India took a pre preemptive action, a preemptive move. They captured some high ground. 
which gave them a strategic advantage in the, in the Pangong So frontier here. And PM Mahdi is basically he's uh, he's taking a new approach. He's taking offensive defensive positions, offensive defense as a fulcrum of his military strategy. Uh, India is no longer being the passive country that we've always known to be, you know, as that's typical for the Hindu religion. They're, they're becoming aggressive now. But China's been aggressive in this region for some time, and India is realizing what's the stake. So they're standing up in their counter. They're not just mirroring uh, the actions of China now. They just took preemptive action. And the CCP, uh, PLA, uh, basically they, they were uh, trying to dominate heights, they were occupying heights in the area. So what happened is that the, the, the PLA troops began climbing in a tabletop area between blacktop and uh, Tekong Heights. And uh, this is on Pangong, so south base somewhere here. South uh, Bank, I should say. Uh, and they were climbing this with ropes and climbing gear. And the uh, Indian Army took note of that. They saw this going on. They decided to, to take strong preemptive action. And so they, they put into action their uh, commando unit, the Special Frontier Forces. And the Special Frontier Forces is a force that's recruited heavily from uh, Tibet, Tibetan uh, uh, people who have fled Tibet and are living in um, India now, basically the Tibetan um, exiles. And these exiles have been just uh, chomping at a chance to get back at China. They're unhappy. They left Tibet because of the CCP and their policies with their people. They're extremely unhappy and they're looking for any chance they can get, get back in and they're hardened frontiersmen for the mountain. The people of Tibet, that's where they live. But these guys are recruits that, that, that were living in exile in India from Tibet. And uh, so that's the nature of the covert paramilitary uh, command force that was put into action. And what they did uh, is that uh, they essentially came in from some other higher ground and did a surprise move and outflanked the Chinese who were trying to take what they thought was a high ground. These guys came in from higher ground and come in on because they were quite more accustomed to the mountains. And uh, that really surprised the Chinese. Basically, they forced them out of the spot they were trying to take. So essentially, India got preempted. They took action, snuck in to a higher ground and, and actually seized the Chinese base that they were trying to establish. Um, and so now China is accusing India of crossing national line of control. And you know, maybe that happened. But uh, so what we've had is, again, India took surprise initiative and they seized the high ground. So China was trying to come in to take this ground and India just kind of outflanked them and came in and surprised them and pushed them out before they got really entrenched. <laughs> so, uh, when you go back and you look at this this poll I just mentioned, uh, that's not good. Bear in mind that uh, Chinese have uh, just said that they're going to retaliate, and the polls support them in doing that. What does that mean, retaliate? This is why the tensions are ratcheting. This is why you need to prepare. You know, we're at risk of losing. You know, we may be drawn into this. And we know that China will like to take Taiwan, and we know they don't feel that they can confidently take Taiwan as long as the United States is in the way. This is why we may see the day that they will take our lights out when they impede. Now, I've done other videos on that topic. I'm not going to get all in that where you buy that or not. Go look at all my other videos on this. You know, I had trouble with this video, and I'm so late on it because right now there's so much going on in China, I had to figure out just what I wanted to talk about. Uh, because I could have done five videos today on, on this alone. I don't want to make my channel a China channel. <laughs> that is not my objective. I'm just trying to tell you what you need to be aware of. So you can be aware, prepare. I'm going to do a video tomorrow on this uh, beautiful little herb here. I'm going to call it my mystery net for, for right now. <laughs> now this is kind of wilted. But I'm going to do a video tomorrow on that. You know, I was trying to show you how to eat from the weeds and the trees, the wild medicinals, how to grow your own garden, because the time may come that you got to do that. I mean, let me, let me stop this here. I'm going to have to go back and show you something else. Uh, 
it's very important that you not only be able to store food, it's just a show here, but you better learn how to grow food. I'll miss that word again. I'll just write this down. I'm going to grab one. There we go. And my tabs are not, it's hard to hit my tabs when my Zoom overlay goes down over the Google tabs. <laughs> Truly market. If you click my links below my channel notes, you will see, or sometimes I put it in my pin note in the comment section too. I put it in both places, except for my live chat sessions, my live sessions. I do uh, post this where you can go in to True Leaf Market. If you buy from True Leaf Market, it helps me and it helps you. You don't pay a cent more, but they have tons of, of garden supplies and seeds where you can buy uh, all kind of heirloom seeds, you know, openly pollinated. You can buy the uh, seeds that you can replant, grow the same plant again year after year after saving your seeds, which is what you got to have. Your hybrid seeds are not going to cut it. And you can grow microgreens in your house if you grow inside. And other key things, so I'm just going to microgreens. These are the kind of things you can grow. And some of them are really beautiful. They taste wonderful. You can grow an amazing amount of food in a small area. And I've done videos on that. You can see those. Uh, those are some of my older videos on my channel here. And I will do more in the future, I suppose, on this topic. Um, I'm always going to be showing a lot of different things on this channel. So just bear in mind that even if you live in the city, you can grow food in your home, in your living room. That's what I was doing. That's what I showed you how to do uh, in some of my earlier videos. I put out several videos in this topic. I think everybody got tired of seeing them. <laughs> Somebody stopped to share. <laughs> so once again, uh, subscribe to my channel uh, to get the updates so you can see the videos I do on all these different topics. Like this one's real. <laughs> When I show you how to grow your own food without having to go to the store to buy things, that's what I do. I mean, a lot of channels show you how to garden. I show you how to garden, you can do it from what you got. You don't need to buy fertilizers. You don't need to buy, I don't use any. I don't use any chemicals in my garden at all. And I grow a lot of medicinals. I show you how to plant it, how to harvest. And most importantly, and one thing a lot of channels don't show because it's the same as we born, I show you the bed prep. How do you prep the beds so your food will grow when you're not in the store to go and get fertilizer? So. <laughs> All right, sometimes I stretch around, but I don't know, that's just kind of my nature. Okay, so once again, to recapitulate, there is a real risk of a conflict between China and India. That could put us in a nuclear winter. We could also be drawn into the conflict, or the prospect that we would get drawn into the conflict, or that China might want to take Taiwan, which are really rattling the saber on hard right now, really hard, which, you know, they've got to have some strategy for dealing with Taiwanese missiles to do that. And that's the word of the entire program. There's so many things I could talk about on there. Also about the instabilities of the CCP and the Xi Jinping, as he's striving right now to become chairman of the CCP as a president. Yeah, to take the title of Mao Zedong. He's really, you know, he's set up where you don't have to be reelected, but he's really trying to get more power. And they're talking about in China, um, maybe going through a new cultural revolution. They may go internal again just for a bit because they want to consolidate the power base. The most important thing to a dictator and to his party is to keep the power they have. That's more important than the, than the health and welfare of their own citizens by a long shot. I mean, you look at how many people they eliminate in their country or their, their history. Tens of millions. Tens of millions. I hear numbers like 60, 70 million, 80 million. You know, the estimates vary wildly. Starvation is a big thing that they employed as a, to control their people. And they made me get starvation right now just as a cause of lacking the food. Uh, so guys, it's a dangerous situation in a dangerous world today. And the dangers that exist inside and outside of our country. The dangers are everywhere. They come from nature. They come from the sky. They come maybe from judgment. You know, if you go to the book of Revelations, it talks about a war. And I should have looked this up before I did this. It talks about wars. And it talks about the powers that send 200 million troops across the, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers going uh, from east to west, where those trips come from. But in the process of all this, they kill 
a large fraction of the world's population. And guess where you can draw a circle around Southeast China and over more than half the people in the world live inside that circle. So that's not hard to imagine that coming from this area. And that's why I think a war, a war like this is a credible future because I think it's right out of the Bible, not out of Revelations. Revelations is a very interesting book, whether you are a Christian or not. It, uh, it seemed to be very per perceptive on the kind of world we live in. And a lot of people don't agree with that. Including Christians, I have a lot of so that 200 million, that's just a fort. I've had some, well, that was the forces of Islam invading over many millennia and just adding up. Maybe, but the way it's described, the way I read it, it sounds like a singular event. So I could, I could be wrong. I'm, you know, I'm always trying to be corrected. I don't claim to be the expert in everything under the sun. But I'm going to tell you the way I read it, the way it reads to me, it looks, you know, the kind of creatures described look like the devices we have in the world today. The things screaming through the sky, like a long woman's hair, remind me of the contrails. Uh, the, the locusts that are flying look like, they sound to me like helicopters. The beasts that are driving through the ground and driving around shooting fire from their tails. Thanks. You know, uh, it really sounds like modern devices when I read that book. And that, you know, if you were alive 2,000 years ago, what would you have thought of yourself something like that? The beast. I mean, how else would you describe something else that's moving and puffing and puffing and belching fire? <laughs> I mean, you know, how would you describe it? How would you describe a helicopter or a jet plane? Think about that. Or any kind of vehicle. I mean, the, the sights of such thing would have been scary to somebody when the only thing they had was a chariot and some horses. Uh, so you put it in that perspective, that, that's a very interesting book. Very interesting book. And you believe it or not, you got to at least say it's very interesting. <laughs> but the kind of things it talks about makes me think. It makes me think about the times we live in and the things that are coming before us. So I will say to each of you, be right with your maker. Be right with your creator. I'm not telling you how to do that. Uh, that's you know, not the purpose of my channel. I'll leave that to yourself to figure out. If I'm, this is not a channel about religion. Uh, we do pray on some of my sessions, but we pray with greater creator so you can define that however you need to according to your own belief systems. I'm not trying to trespass on any of that. But... I find the times we're in today to be, like I said, very interesting. In the Chinese proverbial sense of the word, which is a curse, of course, uh, this year has been traumatic and it may get a lot worse. So buckle up, brace yourselves, get ready. If you're not prepared, you better get started, you better run. And if you're well prepared, this may be your last chance to shore up what you have. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope all this blows over. And it's just, you know, like the Cold War between Russia and China, and you know, uh, cooler heads prevail. But in that Cold War between Russia and China, there were several instances that we came that close to total conflict. I mean, there were places and instances that we came closer than even the Cuban Missile Crisis. And we discovered after the wall fell that we were closer then than we realized it. So, uh, we've had too many close calls. It's like Russian roulette. Now you've got several players all at once with uh, the Russian roulette revolver spinning the chamber. So the odds of bad things go up. And when these countries are in close proximity to each other, like Pakistan and India, and, and India and China, they don't have the luxury, the warning time of something flying over the poles that takes, you know, 45 minutes or so to get here. It takes 90 minutes just to go around the orbit of the Earth, right? So it takes some time for something going over the poles and you, and you get to look at it and, 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 and think about, is this real? They don't have that luxury, they don't have air trigger. So uh, yeah, a lot of praying may be in order for truth, but the prospects that things can go bad are getting higher every year. That's why you need to get ready. I do hope these things don't happen, but getting ready means at least you're ready. I mean, hey, if you invest in long-term food storage, what's going to happen? You're going to have food at a lower price down the road. It's going to be a bargain. It's a great investment. You can't eat gold. You can't eat silver. You don't see me talking gold and silver. You can't eat them. One of these days, I might promote, you know, 
something like a C60 or something like that, because that's really helpful for you. But you don't hear me talking about gold and silver, because why? Well, you might have a little bit, but holy smoke, you can't eat it. <laughs> you can't plant it in the ground. The best investments are food and seed, in my humble opinion. <laughs> so take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Um, do what you can right now while you can. And I said, if it don't come to pass, you made a good investment. If you're growing a garden, you're way ahead. You're getting sunshine, exercise. You know what you're eating. You're getting healthy food. Your health will go up. You will have the experience of growing things, which is psychologically tremendously good for you. <clears throat> and you're doing good for the environment, for your country, for your neighbors. And you know you'll have food security. It's the knowledge, the certainty of what you've got, the experience of growing things. You know, and get the kids involved. It's a very educational experience. You're getting exercise, fresh air, vitamin D, all good for your immunity. You can't beat it. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> all right, beat on this enough. I wish everybody the best. It's really late. This is going to be a late post. Hope it does. You know, when you post late, uh, you won't do so well. But I just got to get this out here. And I just had so much to do today. Uh, I'm coming in late. Anyway, all I can say at this point to everyone on my channel is share these videos widely. People really need to know about these things. I cover news that you don't see in the regular news. Uh, you don't even see this in a lot of your regular prepping channels. Uh, you know, there's still nobody talking about the 5th of September. We have talked about it. The 5th of September, we've got now 22, 24 cities that there's going to be protests in. That could be a trying time, very much. Have your eyes wide open, my head on the swivel, and try to stay away from consternations, but do protect and cover your own. Where we're from, wherever you're from, I'm not, you know, trying to beat on that part. Just take, take care of your family first and foremost. So everyone, thank you for watching.